Hello, welcome to the Thursday, June 10th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Jan in today's diary uh, looked again at different simple evasion techniques for malware. In the last diary he wrote, he compared 64-bit and 32-bit software and how differently it was detected. Now he looked at two different compilers, the TDM GCC compiler as well as Microsoft's own compiler. Now he compiled uh, three uh, different files, a benign file, the ACAR file, which of course just a standard uh, pattern that should always be detected. And then of course, Meterpreter as sort of a very common and not all that difficult to detect a piece of malicious code. Turned out that actually Meterpreter was detected far more often than the ACAR pattern. That sort of surprised me a little bit, but yes, it certainly depends on on what compiler you're using in the first test TDM GZ compiled binaries were detected much more frequently usually than visual C but the two compilers were somewhat close and making some changes uh, to the code can easily sort of flip that balance or uh, make it more similar the root of this particular behavior is likely that different compilers are optimizing code differently. So if you're starting out with the same source code, you may end up with different binaries. And of course, the antivirus tools, they will include signatures for very specific binaries compiled with very specific compilers. And then hacker by just changing some optimization settings or using a little bit an odd compiler may be able to evade many of these signatures. And then we got yet another interesting attack against uh, TLS. Now, uh, this attack has been called the Alpaca attack. And what it relies on is uh, TLS's ability to be used with uh, different applications. And the problem here is that a particular set of web servers may use the same certificates, the same server private key with different application layer protocols. The way TLS works is that during the initial handshake, you first make sure that you're connecting to the correct server by verifying the certificate. Then you're establishing your encryption keys and the session IDs, and then you go ahead and encrypt the data that you are going to transmit. The problem here is that the authentication part only happens in the beginning. And according to this paper, it's possible to redirect a victim to a different server using the same certificate and private key. And in doing so, the session will essentially be able to continue. But now an attacker is able to inject himself into the session because authentication has already happened. The particular example mentioned in the paper uses a victim's website that's already compromised by the attacker. The attacker then injects a JavaScript to redirect the user, for example, in this case, to an FTP server, but this is not your standard plain text FTP server, but an FTP server using a TLS. And in this case, the attacker is then able with JavaScript again uh, to to trick the browser into revealing things like, for example, their TLS session ID. Now, on the other hand, if you're able to inject JavaScript into a website, you probably can just grab credentials and such directly. So the practicality of this attack, while it is a valid attack, may be a little bit limited there. As far as defenses go, really what it comes down to is use different certificates on different services. That's sort of a good idea anyway to sort of separate some of these services. Wildcard certificates, of course, are a particular uh, possible problem here uh, for uh, this attack or certificates with multiple host names that are then often shared between different servers. Given that most of our certificates these days come from from Let's Encrypt anyway. It may not be really all that terribly difficult to set up different certificates for different services. 
And we got an update for Google Chrome and you better apply it because one of the vulnerabilities being addressed with this update is already being exploited in the wild. It's yet another type confusion vulnerability. Remember just yesterday I talked about the puzzle maker attack that used a Chrome exploit that was patched really sort of the day before the attack was discovered. So double check that Google Chrome updated itself exit it, start it up again, just to make sure that you're running the latest and greatest version. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.